Hello and welcome to episode 11 of my trophy guide for Final Fantasy 16. Fast travel to the Edge of Infinity, which takes care of the only remaining problem location for the Here Be Rosfields trophy, and then open your abilities menu. With Odin channeled, we now have access to the best trash mob cleanup, so reset the abilities Ignition and Scarlet Cyclone. Also reset Gouge and upgrade it. Then reset Upheaval and Master Wind Up instead. Now reset Wings of Light and Giga Flare before upgrading the ladder. Lastly, we want to upgrade Dancing Steel, Gungnir, and then Master Zentetsken. You might also have to reset Phoenix Shift, Deadly Embrace, Charged Magic, and Precision Dodge. Make sure you have Odin, Garuda, and Bahamut as your icons. Then slot in Gungnir, Dancing Steel, Gouge, Wind Up, Giga Flare, and Lightning Rod. Optimally, we would like Phoenix over Bahamut, but for that we require 6000 more AP to master Giga Flare. Follow me to Notorious Mark 23 out of 32 Agni as I explain Odin's iconic feat. While having Odin active, we can press Circle to activate his feat called Arm of Darkness. This transforms our sword into Odin's sword, which will deal less damage but instead fills up the Zantetskin gauge. To use Zantetskin, Arm of Darkness has to be active. Then hold square and release after the blade flashes to use Santetskin. A level 5 Santetskin will deal a lot of damage to all enemies within a huge radius around you. More about this later. While facing this boss I only want you to also learn about the two new abilities. Using Gungnir performs a continuous flurry of melee attacks with each hit slightly filling up the Santetskin gauge. Smaller enemies will get dragged around by this. Hitting multiple enemies will charge the gauge faster. And lastly, getting attacked during this will cancel the attack. Using Dancing Steel will have you stand still for a second before performing an attack with two blades. Getting hit during the windup will cancel the ability, but you can still try again. Performing the ability but not hitting anything will do nothing and use up the ability. If you do hit something, time will stop as you perform an extensive flurry of attacks, charging the Zantetskin gauge by 3 to 4 levels. Hitting multiple enemies during this fills it even more. Note that neither Odin's abilities nor attacks with Arm of Darkness fill the limit gauge. This is no deal breaker, but I still wanted you to be aware of that. Now that I have bombarded you with all that information, all I want you to remember is that we want to use Gungnir and Dancing Steel to reach Santetska level 5 to deal a lot of damage. Just note that, as I have pointed out, Using Dancing Steel can be a little difficult, since it requires a proper opening to hold off consistently. After taking out Agni, we fast travel to the Dragon's Airy. It's no new enemy and also doesn't have any notable moves. I've had warmer well.
Here we make our way to where we took out the Bomb King previously to find Notorious Mark 24 out of 32, Terminus. What? Time to fight. This is basically just a more powerful version of the Sphere miniboss we faced in the previous chapter. Just like that one, this specimen has not much health and can be taken down quite quickly and easily. Fast travel to Kratos afterwards. Next up is Notorious Mark 25 out of 32, Thanatos. Come on. Fly Ambrosia. All right. This is a more powerful Undertaken miniboss which can now cast Spirits Without, which is just a more extensive version of Spirits Within and can be exploited even more by standing outside of range. Let's <laughs> go. 
Now fast travel back to Isla, where we wanted to tackle the first of Odin's trophies. Unequip the Ring of Timely Evasion and then make your way to Notorious Mark 26 out of 32, Gobermouch. This little goblin guy has no dangerous attacks and does not deal a lot of damage. We additionally have a lot of potions if we get to low health. The reason we took off the ring is that we now have to parry 3 attacks with Odin's Arm of Darkness active to perform 3 steel counters within a single fight. This is almost impossible to do with the ring equipped, since the time window to parry an enemy starts just a few fractions of a second before the ring will automatically make us dodge the attack. This way we just have to attack the goblin as he attacks us until we got 3 parries which we will have to follow up by pressing square each time to perform a steel counter. This will then unlock the fistful of steel trophy. Then just be aggressive and take out this little pest. Make sure to equip the Ring of Timely Evasion and then leave Isla through the North Gate. Soon after we left, we will find the starting point of the side quest Late to Rest. This is the final of the additional side quests and takes just a little over a minute to complete.
Ambrosia won't help me here. You were right, Joshua. Fly, Ambrosia. What is up ahead? Straight home now. For now, just follow me to the next story marker, where we want you to take out a whole bunch of enemies. This will include another assassin and warlord miniboss. Our main strategy for every trash mob encounter from now on is to charge Santetskin to level 5 and then use it in the midst of all enemies. A level 5 Santetskin will deal enough damage to one-shot all small enemies on this difficulty and can even still do so most of the time on the highest difficulty during the next playthrough. We also have to execute 5 Santetskin of level 2 or higher to obtain a trophy, but that will be done passively as we progress. I also want to point out that here or during the next main dungeon is a great time to pick up the cold-blooded trophy that I covered last episode. Wait for an enemy to trigger your precision dodge to freeze three or more enemies. Then use diamond dust to kill those enemies. Of course you will have to readjust your abilities to pull this off. Follow me further from here and towards the story marker. On the way we will take care of three more things, the first of which will be Notorious Mark 27 out of 32 by Gull. Ready go? Faster!
No villagers. No knights. Not even any bodies. One could almost believe the whole kingdom had turned to Kashyyyk. This curl type miniboss now has access to the static torrent move, which puts projectiles and damaging areas of effect all around you, but its only actual dangerous move is still the whip crack. Now follow me to the side quest marker where we only have to lay down the ashes to complete the side quest. Afterwards we will make our way towards the final chronolith trial, the Hand of Enchiladas. Come on. Does it bother you that we haven't heard a single human sound? Everything about this place bothers me. Back to the stables, girl.
Stage 1 gives us Heaven's Cloud and Gungnir. The Heaven's Cloud ability lets us quickly hit multiple enemies around us, which deals little damage and slightly fills the Zantetsken gauge. Easily the worst ability in the game, as it does practically nothing we couldn't do without it in the same amount of time. Wave 1 spawns in 5 lesser enemies. Try to group them together and then use Gungnir to fill our Zantetsken gauge. Then activate Arm of Darkness to reach level 5 and one-shot the enemies. Wave 2 spawns 6 more trash mobs, so repeat the same process. Ungnir recharges very quickly. Feel free to use Heaven's Cloud if you feel like it. It won't make a big difference, if any at all. Take out this wave with another level 5 Santetsken. Here I also unlock the trophy Every Damn Sinew for landing 5 Santetsken of level 2 or higher. Wave 3 spawns a Minotaur miniboss, which I end up taking out with just our regular attack combo. The idea here is to use Gungnir whenever it is up, and if we have an opening, to charge Santetsken as much as we can and then keep it for the next stage. This is probably the most difficult Chronoth trial in the game, simply for the reason that the only ability remotely useful against bosses is Dancing Steel. If we don't have that, we are going to spend a lot of time whittling down health or charging up Santetsken. And we don't get our limit break either, since Odin's feet and abilities don't fill it. You should still be fine if you follow these steps though. Stage 2 gives us Heaven's Cloud and Rift Slip, which is an even more terrible loadout than during Stage 1. Rift Slip cancels whatever animation we are in and slows down time drastically for about 2 seconds. This can be very useful when combined with other abilities, but is completely useless by itself, meaning we basically have no abilities for this stage. Wave 1 spawns a Panther miniboss and two lesser enemies. Take out the weaker enemies first for some extra time and then fill up the already partially filled Zantetsken gauge to use it at level 5. Look at the health my boss has. Use Zantetsken when he is below this amount to ensure a kill and get an 18 second bonus. Wave 2 spawns 7 weaker enemies. Use Arm of Darkness to go back to Zantetsken level 5 and use it to kill them all. While this does take longer than just taking them out with a regular attack combo, it also adds more seconds to the timer, making this a safer method. Wave 3 spawns a Dragoon miniboss and 3 trash enemies. Once more, just take Zantetsken to level 5 and use it once the miniboss is at roughly 2 thirds health or below. Make sure to not use it while he jumps, as it will then miss, which will most likely already be enough to end this attempt. Stage 3 gives us Dancing Steel and Rift Slip, which is the best combination for bosses, since Rift Slip basically negates the wind-up animation of Dancing Steel. 
Wave 1 spawns a Guardian miniboss and 4 weaker enemies. What you want to do is use Rift Slip to slow down time and then use Dancing Steel to fill your Zantetsken gauge. However, for Rift Slip to work we first have to do any action like attacking. Otherwise Rift Slip will go on cooldown without doing anything as you can see here. Wave 2 spawns 6 trash mobs, so use regular attacks with Arms of Darkness, then Dancing Steel when it's back, to charge your Zantetsken to level 5 and one-shot them all. Wave 3 spawns a Brute and an Avis miniboss. Once again, use the same strategy as before to take them out as well. Stage 4 gives us Dancing Steel and Gungnir to fight the boss of this trial, another Chimera miniboss. This combination is also very good as it lets us fill the Zantetsken gauge very quickly and the Chimera gives us enough openings to do so without Rift Slip. Use its Fire Breath attack to use one ability at a time and use Zantetsken level 5 whenever it is ready. If you have any limit break then use it in combination with Zantetsken. Dancing Steel has priority over Gungnir. Completing all Chronoth Trials will unlock Curiosity 11 out of 32, the Circle of Malleus.
Now make your way to the main dungeon of this episode, Drake's Spine. I will talk to you once we reach the first boss in there. Let's go. Faster. We now face the behemoth. Phase 1 is pretty simple. The boss has several hard hitting but slow moves which we can comfortably follow up with abilities until it reaches roughly two thirds of its health. It will then summon an ecliptic meteor which we have to destroy during a QTE.
For the remainder of the fight, the Behemoth has several new moves at its disposal of which two are notable. First is Maelstrom. This is not particularly dangerous but has us constantly dodge, meaning we should try to stay away from it so we can actually deal damage. Using abilities inside it will also instantly result in us taking damage. The other and only actually dangerous move is simply called Meteor, not to be confused with Comet. Meteor summons a rain of meteors which smash into the ground and leave active hitboxes behind that have to be manually dodged. This can be a little tricky since there are a lot of them, but it is not too bad. Once the behemoth reaches low HP, its health gets capped. You will notice how I keep interrupting it without actually dealing any damage. It seems that he has to use Meteor at least once for you to be able to deal damage again. Lastly, you cannot actually kill the behemoth. Close to death, it will eventually cast a new spell called Extinction, which summons another Meteor. Avoid it to win the fight. Now the entirety of the remaining dungeon is an extensive enemy gauntlet. We will face several mini bosses but there are no new enemies, encounters, mechanics or similar. Simply go through it all. Use Odin's abilities and Santetskin to take out hordes of enemies and check my gameplay to see which groups of enemies you can skip or hurt together. Use all your abilities combined with limit break to pressure mini bosses and that honestly covers the entire next segment. I will see you when we reach the main boss of this episode.
Once we step onto that bridge, we'll be easy targets. Then we better move quickly.
We now face Ultima, who is also eligible for the Damageless Boss Trophy. He always opens the fight by using Neutron Flare, which always has a chance to hit you, but deals very little damage. Ultima is also open for a second afterwards. And during this phase, he is still pretty slow and is open after his 1-2 to two attack combos. The only other noteworthy move is his Mark of the Storm, which hits you with a precise lightning strike a few seconds after the move is used. You can wait for it to go off if you want to be extra safe. At around 3 quarters of health left, he will enter phase 2. phase he is still pretty slow and has the same regular attack patterns. There are two new notable moves he can use from now on. First is Event Horizon. This move will be dodged automatically and does not leave Ultima open. However, it does suck you towards it. If you use an ability as you make contact with the Event Horizon, you will take a lot of damage. The other move, which he did not use during my fight until phase 3, is Eternal Darkness. Most of the time you will dodge this automatically, but to be safe, you can manually evade the middle laser and then move to the middle to avoid the remaining lasers. You can see me do this later. After reaching half health, he will eventually transition to phase 3. open this phase by using Deliverance. This is not a dangerous move and leaves him wide open for a few seconds after this 7 attack combo. His other special moves, Ricochet and Frostbolt, are neither dangerous nor do they give you an opening. Apart from that, he is still rather slow and open after all of his attack patterns. He does have a few new combos up his sleeve now though that are longer than just 1 or 2 hits. If you want to be sure, then be patient and wait for them to end before using your abilities. I play very aggressively and you can see me dropping to low health a few times. That is also fine. Just remember to heal up before you die. Defeating Ultima will reward you with the Pull of Darkness Dancing Steel accessory and unlocks the Ashes to Ashes trophy. With this, we reach the end of this chapter and this episode. I will see you in the next one.